Greetings, friends, and welcome back to another episode of my Let's Play Legacy of the Void. I'm Fwop, and at the moment, I believe we are headed to Shakuris, having grabbed the Zelnaga Keystone. The understanding of the Keystone, it is fascinating that the Terrans managed to wield it as a weapon. I am hesitant to conclude that this was its primary function, or even an intended one. It wasn't really the Terrans, unless they mean the end of the Wings of Liberty campaign. Is this the same artifact? Hmm, maybe. So let us Look chat. Here, Hierarch. This material self-regenerates. It is no wonder the research of the Terrans claimed it to be from a recent epoch. My projections place it at several billion years old, if not more. Zeratul's vision said that this keystone can guide us unto hope. What do you think it means? Yes, guide us. It is a code wanting to be cracked. The keystone seems to be able to manipulate energies, but that may not be its sole purpose. I believe it stores its origin point within. Its origin point? Yes, hmm. I promise you. I will find out how this will lead us to the Zelnaga. Redouble your efforts, Carax. There is little time. All right. Unallocated solarite. We want all that up in our stuff. So I didn't get a chance to use Chrono Surge. Uh, partly, I mean, it would have been super useful if I started off with the 75 energy. But since you don't. All right, guys. We've got 55 points. We haven't tried out Temporal Field. I've uh, heard from Levy that Temporal Field is actually one of the better ones, or at least awesome in its own right. Um, 20 seconds is a long time, and it would let you like split an army in half, uh, or stop a, a, an attack on the whole front for 20 seconds. Uh, pl plenty of time to warp in something, so that's nice. Solar Lance. Three beams dealing 200 damage with each beam. Warp in reinforcements. Quickly warp in a pylon with two melee warriors and two range warriors to any visible location. That is pretty awesome. And it is exact same cost and cooldown as deploy pylon. Five lasers from or orbit, each of them dealing 50 or 100 versus armor damage in their targeted area. Well, uh, let's try out Warp and Reinforcements. It's pretty easy to predict how good that's going to be. Um, <clears throat> because I know exactly what all of these things are. Temporal Field, I understand 200 damage with each beam. It depends on the size of the beam how useful that's going to be. Temporal Fields. Let's just go with the Temporal Fields this time. Or... Let's actually look at the mission itself. Oops, you're not the mission. There are new personnel awaiting your review in the War Council, Hierarch. I know. I just want to know where we're going. Uh, hey there, your royal ness. Man, this is weird. I've never talked to no Protoss before. <laughs> hey. It's one of those dirty if orifice users. From your commander, Raynor. It is that we are not so different, Rory Swan. Continue. I am telepathic and you know your name. Though. Right. So the artifact, uh, the uh, the Keystone thingy, is all yours. We're in the middle of transmitting all our data to your engineer. You have my thanks. Please relay my appreciation to Commander Raynor. Hey, you got it, Skippy. Skippy. Mm-hmm. Watch, I'll end up. Oh, look. Glacius has opened up. Zeratul, old friend. I have the keystone you believed would lead to our salvation. And yet, faith alone will not defeat Amon. As Hierarch, I was made aware of a location where our Kalai scientists experimented on new weaponry in secret. Within the Glacius facility, the purifier program has been reborn. We must recover this hmm. immensely powerful technology. 
So sentries or Dark Templar and the Kahedron Monolith. Let's uh let's go for the Dark Templar. It's been sitting around longer. Sentries are neat, but they're a little micro intensive and it's my first game for the day. So let's see the intro before we allocate our resources. Uh oh. of life is extensive. Hold. We are receiving a transmission. Praise the gods. Artemis, you live. Matriarch Morazum, what has happened here? Shakuras has fallen. The warp gate linking this world to Ire has been reopened. Countless hybrid and Zerg pour from the other side. They've obliterated our cities, decimated our Shadow Guard. We are trying to evacuate the remaining population, but I am uncertain whether we can hold long enough to get them safely away. We will give you the time you need, Matriarch. My Templar are inbound. Man, the Protoss race, I don't, I don't know if they really have enough, like, viable genetics left. My Dark Templar were tracking your invasion on Ayr when we were cut off. Then the warp gate opened. What happened, Artanis? Amon used the Kala to seize control of the Templar. I could feel his rage tearing through me, and I was powerless against it. Zeratul found me. It was there that he... He... Yes? He tried to free me. And he succeeded at the cost of his own life. He fell by my hand. It was Amon's deed, not yours. Man, if this were Game of Thrones, there'd be a whole book about how she was going to kill him. Because of this, he is now gone, and the stars burn dimmer for his loss. Amon's deed or not, I carry a burden, Matriarch. One that cannot be easily lifted. True. Very true. Okay, let's look at the mission objectives sometime. Sometime, guys. Amon's the Zerg infestation is overtaking Talmetros. Our evacuation is already in great peril. Your raid cannot come soon enough, Hierarch. All right. Complete the mission without letting the warp conduit drop below 2,000 life. So we have to defend something. Free all Protoss launch bays before the last Void Thrasher appears in Amon's Reach on normal difficulty. Warp Conduit active, Zerg Infestation, Dark Templar, free launch base. I mean, obviously that involves dealing damage to something somewhere. So let's go to our War Council and see what we're working with, and then we'll do Solarite last. Robotic Assault Units can now be added to our army, Hierarch. All right, Robotic Assault Units are available. We have Immortal. With its damage barrier. Cooldown one minute. Absorbs up to 100 damage. Lasts for 10 seconds. Improved barrier. Increases the amount of damage absorbed by the Immortals barrier by 100%. So that's 200 damage, which is a boatload. Don't get me wrong. That's nice and tough. And then there is a, holy snap, the Shadow Cannon has a cooldown of 45 seconds, deals 200 damage to target unit or structure. So that looks like an activated ability. It works on air units as well, which makes them just incredibly good units to have. But it looks like they lose the shield completely. I mean, we're gonna have to see how this Annihilator works. The, uh, the Nerezim Immortal. All right. So let's see, we're defending. I haven't tried the Stalkers with the shield regen yet. I know that they're excellent, of course, 
the Dragoons. Um, toughness, let's see, the Dragoons had 200 health total. I think it was 80 shields and 120 health. Uh, that increased range is nice. But of course the Stalkers will be mobile. Since we're defending and probably attacking something, is what I gleaned from those two other objectives, the uh, shield regenerating Stalkers uh, seem like a nice versatile choice. The Annihilators, uh, since it's Zerg, there's probably going to be hybrids. And it is a tough choice between the defensive and the offensive ones. But we haven't ever seen these offensive ones yet. And then with the Melee Warriors... Um, the Shadow Guard waits. Mm, we are the blades of I think I'm going to go with the Whirlwind for now. Uh, the shadow guard waits. I'm not sure. We are the blade, the shadow guard. Let's just keep switching it back and forth since I can't really tell. So we'll go back to the shadow ones this time. All right, so we've picked our forces. I've been trying to isolate the major population centers in need of evacuation. The Zerg what you got for his characters? Far outnumber those of the Protoss. Most of the survivors seem to have gathered within Talametros. There must be Nerezim Facemits you know among them. Those who stayed behind. I am not seeing any Protoss life signs from within the engineering bay's hierarch. Then they have met their fate. Or perhaps they fought their way to safety. The Dark Templar do not follow our caste system. Some of their face myths are trained warriors, skilled as any of ours. That does give them. Because the Dark Templar are better. They're basically like the water dwelling then, template version from D and D of every monster, different. which is of always twice as bad. Rock. Like water trolls? No. So much worse. Okay, temporal field sounds like it could be useful in all these situations. Uh, although warp in reinforcements. Probably would be awesome. Um, uh, we do need to see how Temporal Fields works, so let's do that. Let's up our construction time and spend some on our starting supply. Yeah. All right, we are ready to go, and we're going. What is that? Is that a Void Thrasher? It looks pretty brutal. Um, pretty sure that's what the Cthulhu Mythos is based on. Oh. <laughs> wow. What? I love the StarCraft inspired art it is utterly fantastic. It makes me very happy. Shakura's teams with Amon Zerg broods. We hold only the southwest quadrant of Telemetros, and even that is in peril. We must evacuate our people, but the launch base has been defiled with infestation. Only ground forces can clear them. Once the bays are free, the planetary warp conduit will allow our ships to escape safely. The launch bays will be cleared. Your people will survive, Matriarch. This I swear. They will survive. Hey, hey. You will need the aid of my Dark Templar in this battle. They can strike from the shadows without fear of reprisal.
Oh, what? Jesus. We must slay it before it destroys the conduit. Strike as one Templar. All right. Go strike one time. <laughs> oh, they're doing fine. No. I can't see its health. Oh, there it is. It's got like 9,000 health. The is slain, but it will be for naught if the launch bays remain infested. Let's let's scout out this one. Be careful. The spore crawlers and overseers ahead can detect our dark templars. Now they're totally gonna slay them first. kill this poor Templar. Launch bay has been cleared. Continue evacuating. Okay. What is this? Move units here. Sweet gas. These vaults hold the solarite reserves that tell Oh, is that what I needed? You may claim them with our blessing. Indeed. Completing bonus objectives will allow me to improve the Spear of Adun's power. Almost there. there. Come on, other Dark Templar. Queen's detectors? Can't click on them. That looks like a no. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. 
Sounds good. Interesting. Second launch bay. Well done. Half of the bays are launching evacuation ships. Back Templar. Mm, all right, we're like maxed out on energy. Oh, can I make those weird hadron things, or are they like an upgrade? The Zerg attack. Okay, we still got plenty of help on this guy.
first. Now, where's that idle worker button? Good. Check two. How are we gonna want? Not enough side, don't want pylons. Should be fine. We have purged the infestation. Only one launch bay remains disabled. Now I have to find all the solar. I don't want to leave any behind. Now get out of there. Get out of there. Should be all of it then. They just, that's so much regeneration. Basically, perma full shield. Okay, let's make sure to get this dude out there. Standard attack twenty two fifty four. Activated ability, 200 damage, target unit structure, all right. See these things attack that. Right? No, it's just the ability. It's just the ability they can target air. Okay, let's see if we did all that correctly. Looks like it took almost exactly a half hour. It's all that talking. Okay, seems like we got it all. Got all the solarite. Oh, you get tin anyway? Okay, nice. Yeah, I think we were healthily above 2,000 life. And the launch bays were not a problem. Unless that was the last Void Thrasher. That might have been a hair, a hair finish. Hairline, something like that. Receding, finish. All right. So this is the perfect time to uh, end this episode. Thanks for watching. I know my attention was mostly on uh, getting my, my Dark Templar out there at front and losing all the regular zealots I built. But um, So I may not have chatted as much as I wanted to, but that was uh, 
that was pretty good dark templar are always fun and we massed up a huge amount there at the end and we did get to see the uh the nerezim version of the immortal in action a little bit uh that's a really strong ability of theirs uh I, I think i can see it working pretty well to tear things down but they'll be a little too micro intensive by the end of the game i suspect uh still uh, worth the thought when you need to assault bases because it's easy to overkill units with a 200 damage ability but uh although really with all the hybrid stuff the unique campaign only missions maybe not all right so that's it i'm gonna wrap this up and remember, until next time, guys, do as I say, not as I do.